there and welcome to my YouTube video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to build up the back neck of a sweater for a shawl collar. So this is a little uh, sample just of the very top neck edge of a sweater. This is where a sleeve will come down, a sleeve, this is a raglan, this is the back, these are the fronts, Here's the beginning of the button band that would come down this way, button band this way. This is the diagonal v-neck on the front. So if we lift this up and look at it, the v-neck would come down the front of the sweater like this. And these fronts would continue down like that. So in this video I show you how to pick up the stitches, how to figure out your ratio, how to avoid holes at the corners. See there's no holes at the corners where if you've picked up the stitches. How to do short rows back and forth to fill in the back neck in preparation for the shawl collar. This is in association with a knit along that I'm doing on Ravelry. It's called It Takes a Guild Cardigan Tutorial. And this is the part that shows you how to do the back neck fill in for the shawl collar. So here we go. When picking up stitches around an irregular edge like this, the first thing you're going to need to do is figure out how often you should pick up stitches for your particular fabric. In this scenario, we have um, three different types of areas to pick up from. We have this really short area where we're going to be picking up stitches from rows and then we have this diagonal area where again we're going to pick up stitches from rows. Then we have the top of the shoulder. We're going to pick up stitches from stitches. Along the back, stitches from stitches. This shoulder, stitches from stitches. Stitches from rows for the diagonal. And stitches from rows for the vertical portion. So how do you figure that out? The first thing you need to do is get some gauge calculations. If you were going to be working this in stockinette, you, you picking up and working the collar in stockinette, you could use the calculations from this particular part of your sweater once it's been blocked. If you're going to be working in a different stitch pattern such as ribbing, or moss stitch or seed stitch or any other pattern, you will need to work a swatch using the needles that you plan to use for this part of the neckline. Work the swatch, block it, and you will need to know your stitch gauge for that particular stitch pattern. For this part, for how many stitches to pick up along here, you will need to know your row gauge for the vertical and the diagonal area. So let's say that you're getting seven rows to the inch um, in your stockinette stitch, which is this portion of your sweater, and you're getting five rows to the inch in the pattern that you're going to pick up from. That means, did I say that wrong? Five stitches to the inch. So you're getting seven rows to the inch in the stockinette, so you're measuring your row gauge. And you're going to get, let's say, just as an example, five stitches to the inch in whatever you're choosing for your band here. That means that you would have to pick up five stitches out of seven rows. Now, how do you do that? I'm going to show you. I have my little whiteboard here. And um, so I'm going to draw you a picture. Let's say that we have, um, we know that our row gauge Let's say this is the button band, the, the vertical portion, and we know that we're getting seven rows to the inch. This is one inch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for the second inch, we're also getting seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there's two inches of a sample. And that we want to pick up five stitches from those seven rows. What we would do is we would pick up in this order. This is one example. We would pick up one, two, then we would skip a row. Then we would pick up three, skip a row. So now we have five stitches picked up from seven rows. And we'd go up and do the next one the same. Pick up two, skip a row, 
pick up three, skip a row. That's on the vertical and diagonal. So if this were along the diagonal, it would be shaped like this, and you would still have your rows. There's our seven rows. You would pick up one, two, skip a row, one, two, three, skip a row, like that. Now what about if uh, for st picking up stitches from stitches for the horizontal portions? So if you have stitches and you have five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, this is an inch, one, two, three, four, five, so we have two inches of fabric here, we're going to pick up one stitch in each stitch along the horizontal portion. So this would be the back, neck, and the tops of the shoulders. Does that make sense? Okay, let's go back to our little swatch and let's do this. So we have our swatch here and I've got some contrasting yarn. I'm going to pick up, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches before I have my diagonal portion. So I'm going to pick up five. I'm going to pick up one here, and I'm picking up between the last stitch and the next to the last stitch. So this was knit from the top down. So here is the very last column. Let's get big. Here's the last column right here. It's kind of that smooshed stitch. The stitches on the edge always look that way. And here's the very first column in. So we can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then our first increase there. Maybe even six, but we're going to say seven. And I'm going to pick up between these two columns of stitches. So my first pickup I'm going to put right here and I'm going to pick up a stitch. Now you can do this with your knitting needle or a crochet hook, it doesn't really matter. Just as long as you get the stitch on the needle in the prop proper stitch mount. And then I'm going to pick up a second one, and then I'm skipping one. So I'm going to skip this stitch. I'm not picking up in that row. I'm going to go up into here. And I'm going to pick up three, one, two, three. Now I'm at the top of my column. Uh, this is the vertical edge. This would be extended down, of course. This would be your button band portion. Now I'm at the vertical v-neck portion. I'm going to continue working in the stitch row gauge. So I'm going to pick up five stitches from seven rows. That happens to be my ratio. You're going to have to figure out your own. Each person's will be different. But I can still see these rows and I'm still going to follow those. So I just did my three so I'm going to skip one and then I'm going to pick up one here, one here, that's two, and then I'm going to skip one and then I'm going to pick up three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to skip one, and these are tight, you want them nice and tight. Skip one, and I'm picking up one here, and I'm at the top of the v-neck now. Now I'm going to start picking up stitches in stitches. We have a hole here where our raglan started. We're not picking up in the hole. If you pick up in a hole, all it does is makes the hole more pronounced. You do not want to pick up in a hole. So we're just going to go over to the next stitch and we're going to go under two bars of the cast on and pick up there. That will close that hole. And we're picking up one stitch in each column as they come up so we stay in pattern. Even, those, even though those were cast on and worked down. So basically what I'm doing is I'm picking up between the stitches. Here's how they were worked. And it looks like I'm picking up between them, right? And I am, but when we turn go this direction, it will flow seamlessly across that picked up area and the pickup will be absolutely invisible. So now we're not going to pick up in this hole. If you see a hole, do not pick up in it. 
That's all I can say. Just skip it. And we're picking up across the back neck. And I'm going to continue picking up all the way around. I'm going to stop the video here and I'll be back in a second to go over the next step with you. Now we have all of the stitches picked up around the neck. We started here and picked up and ended here. So this is like a right side row. The next thing that we're going to do is place some stitch markers on here. We're going to mark off the uh, v-neck area. So we know we picked up five stitches along that front, the button band. So we're going to put a marker at the top of that, which is the bottom of the v. And in the diagram that corresponds with this in the It Takes a Guild written materials, this would be number three. And then we're going to go up to the top of the V, which is where the um, raglan starts, and put another stitch marker. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. At the top of the raglan, and at the top of the V. One, two, three, four, five, right here. Now, we want to count our stitches. Preferably, we would have the same number of stitches along our front button bands and then along the V. So along the V we have one, two, three, four, five, six on this side. Let's see what we have over here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this side. So I'm just going to move this marker. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to move the marker over one. We want to have six on both sides. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have five here. Across the back neck, you're going to want to have stitches that will match the stitch pattern you're going to work. For example, if you're doing knit two, purl two ribbing, you'll want to have it in a pattern of knit two, purl two, and it'll need to fit with these over here. And that is written out in the handout on how to figure that out. And it's different for each scenario and each type of stitch pattern that you want to use. Now in figuring out um, the short rows, which will go between here and here for this back shawl collar, there's going to be short rows between here and here going back and forth. We need to know how much do you want to build up the back shawl collar. Let's say we want to build it up in this case, um, an inch and a half. So we would need to know how many rows in our stitch pattern that we're going to work for the band. I'm just going to use stockinette as an example. Uh, it could be knit two, purl two, or seed stitch, moss stitch, whatever you choose. But let's say we want an inch and a half. Let's get a ruler out here. We have our ruler. So let's measure how many rows we're getting per inch. Let's see, I'm going to use my scissors as a pointer, and let's get big here so you can see this. Let's just measure an inch of rows. So I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows per inch. And if I want to build up an inch and a half, that means I'm going to have to have 12 rows, right? Let's see how many, this is our diagonal edge, how many stitches? One, two, three, four, five, six. We picked up six. And we know from experience that when you make a short row turn, it makes two rows of knitting. So the way you calculate how many short row turns you're going to need in these areas is to divide the number of rows that you want to make. I want to make 12 by 2. So that means there'll be six short row turns on each side, which happens to work out perfect for us because we have six stitches. So every stitch will have a short row turn. Now let's say we had eight stitches over here, but we only needed to make six short row turns. We would skip one. We would work that stitch, but we wouldn't put a, a turn on it. So we're going to do this now. I'm going to show you how to do the short row turns. We're going to work a wrong side row. I'm going to work in knit one, purl one ribbing. Um, you can work whatever stitch pattern you want. So I'm working my first stitches here in knit one, purl one ribbing. I slip the marker. We just purl, so we need to knit the next stitch to stay in pattern. 
That was a number three marker. Don't get mixed up on your stitch pattern. I've done that many times. Now we're going across the top of the sleeve. And these are tight because when I cast them on, I cast them on tight. Let's see, that needs to be a knit stitch. You have to pay attention. Get my marker out of the way there. Okay. Pearl. We're going crop top of the sleeve. Now coming to the back neck. And these are tight, but they should be tight. You want them tight. But that means they don't slide on your needle very easily. Now I also have a video on doing the short rows in one color brioche and two color brioche on this same um, back neck. And those will be coming up next. So just watch for those. Staying in pattern. Now if you end up that you have the wrong stitch count here, and we'll know in a second, because the first stitch past that number four marker should be a pearl, right? So that means this one needs to be a knit right before the marker. Let's see what we end up with. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants, but I know that I can fix it. So we're, we would be doing a knit and then a purl, so it would not be right. So I'm just going to knit these two together. I had one extra stitch, one more than I needed. I'm just going to knit them together. So now the stitch on the other side of the marker will be a purl. So I'm going to slip my marker. Actually, I'm going to take it off. You can leave it on if you want. I'm taking it off. I'm slipping the next stitch to my right needle. Let's make this big for you. This is going to be a short row turn. With the yarn on the side, wherever it is, if you were doing a purl, your yarn would be here. If you had just done a knit, your yarn's here. So you slip the next stitch to the right needle, bring the yarn to the other side, whichever that may be, slip the stitch back, turn your work. That's why it's called wrap and turn. We just wrapped that stitch. You can see the little necklace going around its neck. Now we're going to work back in pattern, so we're just going to follow our stitches. It looks like a purl, so we're going to purl. And we're going to work back in pattern to the number four marker on the other side of the back neck. The back neck includes the tops of the sleeves. And what we're doing is we're just creating extra fabric in the back neck to accommodate the shawl collar. This is what allows the shawl collar to stand up and curl over on itself. If you did not do this, you would not have a shawl collar. For this particular style. Okay, so here we have a knit, our pearl. We're going to actually take this marker off. Like I said, you can leave it on if you want. I just made a purl, so my yarn, my working yarn's in the front, right? We're going to wrap the next stitch. That means we just leave the yarn wherever it was. We slip the next stitch point to point, move the yarn to the other side. We're not changing the stitch mount of the slipped stitch. It needs to stay exactly the same. Then turn the work. That's a wrap and turn, W and T. Then we work in pattern. Back to the other side to our previously wrapped stitch, which we'll be able to see easily. These stand, oops, my needle keeps flipping up. These stand, uh, stand out like a neon light. You don't need the marker, but if you feel better having your marker on there, you can leave the marker on there. That's okay. I'm still working in knit one, purl one. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, here it is right here. Because we can see there's a big gap between this stitch and the next stitch. So this one has the little necklace around the neck. See that? It looks like a pearl bump, but it is not. If you turn it over, you can see the necklace on the other side too.
So we're going to work up to that stitch and not work it. We're going to work to it. And you'll be able to identify it when you get over to it. Coming up, see the gap? So that's called the gap. You knit until one stitch before the gap. Now we can see our wrapped stitch. See the necklace? And that stitch should be a purl if we were going to work it, right? So we're going to conceal the wrap now. This is called concealing the wrap. And if it's a purl stitch, we take, we look at the opposite side of the work. We have to flip it over. And look at, I'm not flipping very well, am I? We look at the wrap. Can you see that wrap going around it? Let's turn it this way. Do you see the wrap there? This is from the right side. You can see the wrap easily goes around the stitch. So what we're going to want to do is pick this wrap up from the right side and put it up on the needle. So how you do that from the wrong side is you take the tip of your right needle down and you pick up that right side of the wrap and you put it up on the needle with the previous stitch. And then you purl these together as one stitch. And that hides the wrap. So let's turn and look at the other side. The wrap is gone. This is the stitch that was wrapped. See, the wrap is no longer there. In fact, it's coming up right here and going behind. And when we get a little bit more work done, it will literally slip to the wrong side of the work and will be invisible. So we've picked up and worked the wrapped stitch. And for our ratio, because we need to use every stitch, we're going to wrap the next stitch. So we're, we have our yarn on the, the forward side because we just purled. So we slip the next stitch point to point, move the yarn to the back side, put this stitch back on without changing its stitch mount, turn the work. Now I have a whole series of videos on working short rows with wrap and turn and I will link them up here in the right corner. So just look for that and you'll see if you need extra help on the wrap and turns you can look at those videos. So now this stitch is wrapped. See that? This was the one that was wrapped previously. Now this one is wrapped. We moved over one stitch and then we're going to work back in pattern to the previously wrapped stitch. And then we're going to take a look and see what we have done here. And we can tell when we're coming up on that stitch because we'll see the gap. And it's getting easier to knit. It's not so tight now because we've got a little bit of fabric on here. Okay, we should be coming up to it. Whoops. Let's look. There's our gap. See the gap? And do you see the little wrap around the stitch? That's the wrap. This time a knit stitch was wrapped. So the way you conceal the wrap, that means picking it up on a knit stitch, is you pick the wrap up from the front, go through it, go through the stitch, and knit them together as one. Do you see that? Now that stitch was worked, so we need to wrap the next stitch. And we just knitted, so the yarn's on the uh, other side, the far side. We slip this point to point, bring the yarn forward, slip it back, turn the work. Now we've wrapped two stitches on each side, and I'm going to work back and finish the wrong side row, and then we're going to take a look at this, okay? And see what it is that we've accomplished so far. So we've done two on each side. And we're moving over one. Now you might have to move over two depending on your ratio. You have to figure out your ratio of how many rows you want to create of new fabric versus how many stitches are available to wrap in that diagonal area. Mine came out that it was one to one. But it might be that you skip one every once in a while, skip one every time, and I'll show you this time what it would be like if you skipped one 
because you're not slipping a stitch. You're just not wrapping. Okay, where's our wrap? There's our gap. Do you see the... Uh, here's our gap right here. There's our wrapped stitch. So we're going to work up to it. And again, you can use markers if you want. I just look for the wrapped stitch. See the wrapped stitch? And this one happens to be a knit stitch also because we just made the purl stitch and we're working in knit one purl one ribbing. You want to stay in your stitch pattern. So I go from the front, pick up the wrap from bottom up, go through the stitch, and then knit them together as if they were one stitch. Now let's say that I'm going to wrap every other stitch. So then I would purl this one and then I would wrap this stitch. I just moved over to the place where I needed to wrap, but I worked the stitch in between. You don't slip it. Okay, so we're going to go back here, and this is going to be wrapped. And we're going to turn and take a look at what we've done. Let's make this big. Okay, let's flip my needle over this way. So this is what we've done. We have created all of these rows in the back neck area. Do you see that? We haven't added any rows over here yet. This is the front vertical portion that will be the button band. This is the diagonal that was from here to here and we're slowly consuming that and we've created several rows here. We've created one, two, three, four, five, six and we have six more to go. So let me keep doing those. I'm just going to work back and forth and we'll be back here in just a second. Okay, I've worked uh, most of the rows. This is my last short row turn on this side. We're on a wrong side row. So I'm going to wrap and turn. I'm going to work over to the um, left back neck. Stitch marker three on the other side. And I should have one short row turn left to work there. Okay, coming up on that. Okay, here's our gap. There's that uh, wrapped stitch. I'm going to pick up this wrap because it's a knit stitch from the front. Work it with the stitch. I'm going to wrap this last stitch on this side. Turn. Wrap and turn. Now we're going to work back to the other side. We're on a wrong side row and that's where we started, remember? we. First we picked up all the stitches on a right side row and then our very first row was a wrong side row so we're back to that. As if we were continuing from here we're going to work all the way across the back collar. We'll pick up the last wrap on that side which is the right front. We're on the wrong side row so that would be the right front the bottom of the v-neck on the right of the sh sweater as you were wearing it, not as you're looking at it. That's a confusing thing for a lot of people. Which is the right front? As you're looking at it or as you're wearing it? It's as you are wearing it. Not looking in a mirror. Okay, here we're coming up on that very last wrapped stitch. Now, of course, we still have the wrapped stitch over here. Um, but that'll be dealt with on the very next full row. But this is our last short row. Now short row means it's not worked all the way across, which that's what we, these have all been short rows. Here's our wrapped stitch. It needs to be a knit, so we're picking it up from the front. Taking our marker off. The next stitch is a purl, knit, purl, knit, and my last stitch is all loosey-goosey. Purl. Whoops. Knit. Purl. So now we've made it all the way down to the bottom 
of the right button band, which is where we started when we picked up that first row. So let's look at this. Here we have our little sweater. This is the right front down here. This is the sleeve right here. This is the right front. Your button band would continue down this way. This is the sleeve, the back, the left sleeve, left front, and this would be our left button band. So you can see in the diagonal areas that we did all of those short rows between here and here. And it filled in the back. So then we're going to do another equivalent amount along the button bands. And when that folds over, it'll fold right on top of this area and give you that beautiful shawl collar. So it will look like this. And it will fold back like this. So there you have it. If you enjoy watching my videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Share them on your social media sites with your friends. Join my knit alongs. I have several going on my uh, Facebook group, Knitting with Suzanne Bryan, and in my Ravelry group, Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. Be sure to subscribe to my channel that way, and click on the bell. That way you get notifications when I make new videos. Come back, watch some more, and happy knitting.